There are few plants as elegant and intriguing as the orchid, and Oklahoma is home to over 30 species of native orchid. Now, most of these are fairly rare throughout the state. Uh, we can find them in a variety of habitats from prairie land to eastern forests such as this. We also find them in a very large range of form, color, and flower size. So some of them are quite small, uh, perhaps the flowers the size of my fingernail, and others are rather showy. Now today, we're hunting out the elusive lady slippers orchid. And I've found a small patch here. The lady slipper orchid is called Superparium kentuckiens. And as the name suggests, this plant can be found all the way from Kentucky and Tennessee, and then southward through the Gulf states and west to Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Now the flowers are fairly large for an orchid found outside of the tropics and several of the lady slippers orchids have these large cup-like flowers. When you're hunting out spring flowering plants or what we call ephemerals, these are plants that bloom for a very short period of time, of course timing is critical and we found this patch a little bit after its peak flowering but there's still a few blooms on here that can help uh, give you a good idea of how large this flower is. It's actually shriveled a little bit now. And orchids have very unique flower structures. Um, and this species has a set of three petals and three sepals. The upper sepal arches over the lowest petal, which is like a cup. And then the bottom two sepals are fused together underneath. The petals here on the sides, there's two petals on each side that are kind of twisted and maroon colored. And then the yellow cup is the lowermost petal. And this is sometimes called the pouch. It contains the reproductive structures of the flower. And orchids are really interesting because they have a very close relationship and evolutionary history with the, the insect species that pollinate them. And so the cup of the flower is designed in such a way that only a few insects can pollinate them. And what happens is the insect will fly into that cup and as they fly in, they'll collect pollen, but they can't fly directly out just based upon the shape of that cup. And so they have to walk out and in doing so, they'll pollinate the flower. And the insects are attracted uh, to orchids based on the color of the flower um, and also some of the fragrance that the flowers give off. Now, lady slippers orchids are very rare in nature and they've been threatened by a number of reasons. One is logging in the forests. Another is conversion of forests to uh, pine plantations. And then also the construction of dams and reservoirs have flooded a lot of the lowland forests such as this, which is one of the primary habitats for this lady slippers orchid. Another reason that plants are threatened is by collection. These beautiful flowers are highly sought after by plant collectors, but plant collectors has a very strong impact on the, the breeding population. A lot of people think that if they just come and take one of these plants, oh, there's several others and they're not doing much harm. But look at how small this population is. This is the only population here for many, many, many acres. And so every plant here really counts as far as contributing to the genetic diversity of the flowers here and ensuring that this population survives. And sadly, very few plants that are transplanted from the wild actually survive in gardens or greenhouses, largely because of the symbiotic relationships that they have with organisms in their native soil. So if you really want one of these for your garden, try to find, um, a reputable grower and watch out for people who sell wild collected plants. Uh, a lot of nurseries will uh, advertise that theirs are grown from seed. The U.S. Botanical Garden estimates that three out of every 10 plant species is threatened and this is in large part due to habitat changes but also from collection of wild plants. It's really up to us to protect these native species and ensure that they're here for generations to come. You can learn more about conserving orchids through the NorthAmericanOrchidCenter.org.